In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get your Wii U homebrew enabled using Tiramisu. All right, now that the Wii U eShop is officially dead, the time has come to show you all how to hack the system if you so desire. And it is actually a really easy and straightforward process using the Tiramisu method. With Tiramisu, you are able to run homebrew, backups of all of your own Wii U games, restore digital purchases, backup digital purchases, all the good stuff that you could ever want. And like I said, this is a pretty straightforward process, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now before we get started, this video is just a video guide of the wonderful Wii U hacks guide that is available in written format. So if you prefer to follow along just to written steps, a link to that will be in the description below and you can follow along with the steps to get everything all set up and getting your Wii U hacked using Tiramisu. But big shout outs to everyone that maintains this guide. It has always been phenomenal and has helped me hack so many systems. Absolutely love it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with hacking our Wii U systems. There are a couple things we're going to need before we get started. The first is, of course, a Wii U system. If you don't have a Wii U, you can't exactly hack it, so... Mandatory to have a Wii U system, doesn't matter if it's the 8GB model or the 32GB model. Either one works perfectly fine. And it also doesn't really matter which firmware it's on, it works on every firmware version available up to the last version that Nintendo released, 5.5.6 for North America, and then I believe 5.5.5 for the rest of the world. Next, you're going to need a method of moving files onto an SD card because that is how we're going to launch our hack through the Wii U itself is through an SD card. So this could be a PC, Mac, Linux, phones, doesn't really matter. But that ties into the third thing we need, which is a FAT32 formatted SD card. Now this can be a micro SD card with a full size adapter or just your standard full size SD card but it has to be formatted into FAT32, otherwise the Wii U will not be able to see it. In my example today, I am using this PNY Pro Elite 256GB SD card, and I'll have a link to this in the description below for anyone that might be interested in picking one up as well. And finally, the last thing we're going to need is an internet connection for our Wii U system, so get your Wii U hooked up to your Wi-Fi network, or if you have a LAN adapter, get it hooked up to that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna get all of our necessary downloads out of the way first. So first off, we're gonna download Tiramisu, the latest version. So links to everything will be in the description below. So just look in the description for all relevant links. But just click on the download Tiramisu option. And next we're gonna need the latest SIG patch from Marco. So again, link in the description below, but just grab 01 underscore SIG patches dot RPX. Now that you have these files downloaded, get your SD card hooked up to your device of choice that you're planning on using to transfer them over with. So again, phones, PC, Mac, Linux, shouldn't matter a whole lot. But anyway, once your USB drive is in place, make sure it is formatted into FAT32. So mine is in XFAT, so that's not going to work. So thankfully for Windows users, there is an easy way to get this formatted into FAT32, and that's just to use FAT32 format GUI, so just click on the picture, link to this again will be in the description below, but you click on the picture, it'll get it downloaded. But make sure that you close out of any windows that might have the file browser popped up, otherwise it might cause issues. But anyway, go ahead and launch into GUI format. Make sure that you have the proper drive letter selected for your SD card. You don't want to format one of your other drives. If you happen to format one of your other drives, that's on you for not paying attention. So please pay attention. But we're gonna leave the default options all selected here and then just format it into FAT32. And there we go, it's all set. So now just going to get that open back up and set it aside for a second here. So we're going to extract Tiramisu now. And I'm just gonna extract it into its uh, self-containing folder there real quick, there we go. And now we are going to copy in everything that's within this folder directly into the root of our SD card. So just like that. Excellent. Now that those are copied over, I'm just gonna close out of this folder. And now we're gonna copy the 01 underscore sig patches dot RPX file into the Wii U folder, environments, Tiramisu, modules, Setup. And we're just gonna drag that one right on in. 
And there we go, initial setup is now complete. So just close out of that, get your SD card taken out of whatever device you use to copy the files over with, and get it inserted into your Wii U. So now on your Wii U, get booted into the Wii U's internet browser. All right, and now from here, we're gonna navigate to the website Wii U Exploit. Dot X, Y, Z. And that should bring you to this menu. Now, if for any reason it doesn't load up as expected, you could go into the settings in the upper right hand corner of your internet browser in the gamepad, and you could tell it to reset your save data so that way it will give you the best possible chance of success. So just go through the reset process as it appears on the gamepad. But once you're able to get the exploit site launched, just click on the run exploit button on the Wii U gamepad and hold down the B button until a menu pops up. And after a few seconds, you'll be brought to this menu to please choose your payload. Now, before we do any permanent modifications to our Wii U, the first thing we're going to do is make a NAND dump. So head down to the third option here of NAND dumper and press A on your gamepad to open it up. And now from here, you can choose which parts of your NAND you're gonna back up. So the SLC, SLC, CMPT, OTP, SSP ROM are all mandatory. The MLC is where all of your game storage and saves are stored, so you don't have to back that up unless you want to, but you are going to need either an eight gigabyte or 32 gigabyte card in your Wii U to back those up. I'm not gonna be backing up the MLC as it is not necessary to have it to restore a broken NAND. So just gonna leave it on the default options here and then press A to launch the backup. And your gamepad will show you the process as it happens, as the, and unfortunately the TV is just going to show the Wii U menu here. Let me see if I can grab my phone here. So it'll just do its thing, so just bear with it while it does it until it is completed. And after that NAND dump has been completed, the Wii U will restart, so just go ahead and turn it off from here and move your SD card back over to your computing device of choice. Now with the SD card loaded up onto your device of choice, you'll see your Wii U's NAND backup right here in these four individual files, or if you decided to back up the MLC, you'll have a lot more. But we just need to back these up to our computing device so that way they're safe. And if anything happens to our Wii U NAND, we can restore it. And the important thing about doing this is if something happens to your Wii U NAND, only your NAND backup is going to be able to bring it back. You can't use a NAND backup from a different system. It just won't work. So make sure to keep these safe in case anything ever happens. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these off of the SD card to save on space. With that done, we're now able to go ahead and put the SD card back in the Wii U and get it powered back on. Once the Wii U has finished booting, go ahead and go back into the internet browser and once again navigate to Wii U exploit.xyz. Now this time, we are going to click on the Run Exploit button and hold down the X button on the gamepad. So Run Exploit, X button. And uh, that closed the curtains on me, that's fun. But the exploit will be triggered and this will take us to our install menu for Tiramizu. So there we go. This time we're going to click on the installer option. So I believe the blue rectangle is the selection option. Yes, it is. So click on installer. And that'll bring us to our payloader installer menu here. And it's going to say, welcome. Do you want to check if an installation is possible? So click yeah. So click A on check. And it'll check if the payload can be installed into the health and safety menu. So from here, click on install slash update. 
And it's gonna give you some extra warnings about how this could potentially lead to a messed up system if things don't go quite right. The chances of that are very minimal, but it's always good to remember that things can go wrong when you modify systems. But once you've read through this, go ahead and select install and press A. And once the payloader has been successfully installed, press A to shut down the console. And now go ahead and get the Wii U rebooted. So now the health and safety information app is your homebrew exploit trigger. So you can launch into this and it will allow you to do homebrew tasks and different things like that. And this does need to be launched every single time you boot up the Wii U. Now there is a method of, now there is an option to have this auto boot every time you turn on the Wii U so you don't have to do it manually. And to do this, just go ahead and launch into the health information app and hold X as it loads. That will bring us back into the Tiramisu installer here. So we're gonna go back into the installer menu. We're gonna do the check and it's gonna say, hey, it's already installed. And then we're gonna be like, that's great. We're going to boot options and press A. And we're gonna tell it to switch to payloader. So that way, every time you load up the console, it will be booted into Tiramisu and then shut down the console when you're finished. And now when you reboot the console, you will see that you're automatically brought into the environment loader for Tiramisu. Navigate down to Tiramisu and press Y to set it as our default launching option. Press A. Now you might get a big red warning about how updates aren't blocked or something, so just press A to continue. And now you can select which option will auto boot when you turn on your Wii U after Tiramisu has been loaded. So you can choose between the homebrew launcher if you wanna go straight into homebrew, the Wii U menu or the VWii system menu. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue booting into my Wii U menu here. So I'm gonna select that as my auto boot option. And then I'm just gonna press A to load it up. So choose whichever one you wanna do. If you wanna just use this for homebrew, that's great. This is just my preferred option here. And with that, your Wii U is now homebrew enabled and you're able to launch into the homebrew browser at any point by going to the Mii Maker. And there we go, homebrew launcher is right there. And if you load up homebrew apps, they will be listed within this menu. I don't have any homebrew apps installed at the moment, so mine is blank. But at any point, you can press the home key on your Wii U gamepad to take you back out to the Mii Maker. And then from here, you can close it and return to your Wii U menu. Now, one last step you might all be interested in is blocking any potential future updates the Wii U might get. The Wii U has been discontinued for a good while now, but Nintendo has still seen fit to update it three times since. With the eShop being gone, I don't think they're going to be doing any more, but there is a possibility they still might. And while the Tiramisu payload launcher has built-in update blocks, it is recommended to delete the system's update folder just to further prevent any system updates. And the easiest way to do this is to use the Oofdeen loader. I'm thinking that's how you pronounce it. I, I don't know. But anyway, just go ahead and get the latest version of this downloaded. As always, links will be in the description below. Once it's downloaded, get it extracted. And inside you will see the Wii U folder, apps, and then Oofdeen. So we just need to add this folder to our SD card. So get your SD card inserted into your computer. So I already have mine here. And then you can just drag the Wii U folder onto the root of your SD card and it should auto populate it into the proper place. So there we go. Now get the SD card inserted into your Wii U while it's powered down. And once the Wii U has loaded up, go ahead and launch the Mii Maker to get into the homebrew channel. And then from here, launch into Oofdeen. And it'll tell you if your update folder exists or not, and then just press A to delete the update folder. And there we go, the update folder is now deleted, preventing any potential system updates from happening on the system. So once that has happened, you can press home to exit. Or if you want to re-enable system updates, you can press A to create the update folder. There's good options here, but anyway, we're done. Now that your Wii U is hacked and auto-booting into Tiramisu, you might be interested in downloading the Homebrew App Store to get you started on your homebrew journeys. 
So link to this will be in the description below as always. But for the Wii U version, we are just going to download the latest Wii U extract something here. So just grab the Wii U one. And then from here, get it extracted. And inside you'll see that same Wii U folder structure that we just used for Oofdeen. So get your Wii U SD card inserted into your computer and drag the Homebrew App Store into it to get it put onto your system. And there we go. All transferred over, so now you can just take it out, put it back in your Wii U, and get booted into the Homebrew browser. And once the Homebrew launcher is loaded in, you'll see the new Homebrew App Store app here, so you can just launch into that. And you'll see a bunch of Wii U homebrew apps available for you to download. So if you want to begin adventures in emulation for something like RetroArch, you can now just go ahead and click on the download button for RetroArch here. And it's even running the latest 1.15 version, so that is just great. And there we go, that's installed, but there's a number of different categories available between homebrew games, emulators, different types of tools, but you can go through and download things to your heart's content. And with that, your Wii U is now open for you to do whatever you wish to do with it. Back up your games, play homebrew, install content onto it. The options are available to you with this initial setup out of the way. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative. Big shout out again to everyone who is part of the Wii U Hacks Guide group. Y'all have made just a very easy, straightforward method of getting these systems opened up and usable for who knows how many more years. Now here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can check out that join button here on YouTube, or click on the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running, and bringing this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions, thank you so very much for believing what we do here, and helping us keep it going, you are the truest of champs, I can never thank you all enough. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.